In just April this year, 2020, more than 100 men, women, and children were killed in an explosion that happened at an illegal oil refinery in Nigeria's Imo state. This is actually the second deadliest explosion after another one that just happened a few months back that killed over 25 people. And this is on top of the climate and environmental disaster that oil mining and refinery is doing to many parts of Nigeria. Hey, this is the African scientist. Welcome to another 10 minutes or so of me hating on fossil fuels. They deserve all the hate I'm going to give them. We all know Nigeria is one of the largest producers of oil in Africa, producing over 1.27 million barrels of crude oil per day in 2021, with Libya coming at second place producing 1.21 million barrels of crude oil per day in 2021. However, the government has been having problems translating these profits gained from oil mining and refinery to the local people. This has led some people who have been had hit by poverty to siphon crude oil from pipelines that come from the mining to the refining process and carry out their own crude homemade refinery of petroleum in the bushes and forests that surround the pipelines, endangering their lives and causing huge environmental disasters through the spilling of thousands of tons of crude petrol into pristine river and forest ecosystems, and perhaps the worst soot pollution ever seen in any part of the world that has caused villages and towns near this region to be completely blanketed by a layer of black soot. Everything from the roads to their houses to their lungs are carpeted by a layer of black soot. I think you don't need a medical degree to know that black soot in your lungs isn't so healthy. A disclaimer though, I'm not blaming any of these people for doing the illegal refinery. These people are suffering under the terrible leadership and political climate created by our so loving African leaders. Truly, corruption creates poverty and poverty creates desperation. And desperation brings people to some terrible, terrible choices and decisions. In just the year 2022, the Nigerian government estimates that over 3 billion US dollars worth of crude oil has been siphoned from the pipeline and redirected to illegal refineries. Now, let me explain to you how a refinery should work. This is a watered down simplified version. I will leave links to a more detailed description of the process in the video description. So we all know that crude oil is made up of many different hydrocarbons that have different boiling points. Because of the differences in their boiling points, they can be separated through simply heating them in a closed container. The hydrocarbon with the lowest boiling point will be the first to boil and come out as steam and can be condensed and collected. This can be done continuously as the temperature of the refinery is being raised to separate all the elements found in the crude oil. The liquids made up of long chain hydrocarbons undergo additional processing after the, the distillation process to create other products. These processes include cracking, which is breaking down large molecules of heavy oil, reforming, which is changing molecular structures of low quality gasoline molecules, and isomerization, which is rearranging the atoms in a molecule so the product has the same chemical formula but has a different structure. These processes ensure that every drop of crude oil in a barrel is converted into a usable product. On the industrial scale, this can be done extremely efficiently and in an extremely clean, nothing is really that clean about crude oil, clean way. However, the kinds of illegal refineries that are happening in Nigeria are homemade refineries that are not really exact and are really not made by engineers and are really not made by people with regard to to the environmental impact of what they're doing. This has caused some of the vessels used in heating up the crude oil to be full of pressure and explode, exploding petroleum. I, I don't think there's anything good about that, killing the hundreds of people that have died. In addition to this, siphoning crude oil from pipelines has led to huge emissions of methane, 
that escapes into the atmosphere because the siphoning is illegal and therefore is not really an exact science. It leads to a lot of wastage. Methane first because it's in gaseous state. I talked about the effects of methane leaking into the atmosphere and how it is a stronger greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide in this video right here. Apart from this, sometimes the siphoning process doesn't really go well and many many thousands of tons of crude oil is leaked into rivers and forests, making this region of the world probably one of the most highly polluted. Because about a third of the young people in Nigeria are unemployed. Illegal refinery of crude oil has attracted many young people, some of them really highly educated. However, the practice, apart from just the accidents and the spillage that happens, has caused huge negative consequences to the populations that live around this region. Many people are now dying of diseases, especially diseases in their breathing system, because they are breathing in toxic substances 24 hours a day. And this is their only home. They can't escape it. They can't go somewhere else. And it is truly a sad situation. In fact, some scientists have actually estimated that the exact human toll of the illegal refinery that happens in this region is almost impossible to calculate because of just how huge and massive and how long term the implications of this would be. As one of the richest, but also one of the largest populations in Africa. Perhaps it is time that Nigeria and Nigerian leaders actually do something about this problem. First, by finding alternative ways to create employment for the young people of the nation. Two, by actually using the money that is earned through selling of petroleum products around the world to benefit the local people of the region. And perhaps three, isn't it time already that we as Africans move away from the old archaic fossil fuel mindset to the new cleaner energy revolution that is taking place all around the world? And yes, I know some countries are a little bit hypocritical on this, especially some European countries that have started turning on their coal power plants. We see you, Germany. But really, Africa has the potential to produce all its energy through renewable sources. It really isn't that hard. It just needs some investment and some clear sober thinking from our scientists and our leaders. It is time that the ecosystems along the Niger Delta breathe some fresh air. My next video is going to be about the potential sources of clean energy that Africa has right now that it's not taking advantage of and how governments and scientists can think about these ideas to better improve the energy independence of Africa and help it to grow economically and empower its citizens into a better future. If you like what we do here at the Africa scientists please consider subscribing consider also buying us a coffee that would be awesome if you think I left out something or I did not portray something clearly as it should be please educate me in the comment section I promise to read all your comments and reply to every single one of them you can also reach out to me on my social media on Twitter Facebook and Instagram and keep the conversation going on the African scientists podcast the only place where African voices speak science I appreciate all of you and we love you Nigeria and we hope that things will change for the better in the near future. Thank you so much for coming along. This is the African Scientist, science from an African perspective.